Hello, let us continue our discussions on polymers and uh, in this lecture, uh, we will uh, finish uh, some of our definitions related to types of polymers and how they are referred to, uh, especially from an application point of view. So, application based terms uh, with a specific emphasis on uh, how polymers are used, uh, we will do this in and uh, to do that, uh, we will just look at uh, what are the different types of uh, terms which are used and uh, many of these terms uh, you are familiar with. Uh, we will also just spend a small amount of time on uh, polymers for uh, energy and uh, robotics and uh, uh, applications which are more advanced and uh, then also things like paints where polymers are used. And an important application of polymers is in composite materials, uh, where polymers are incorporated with an another material. So, generally uh, the uh, way to look at uh, how uh, different polymers uh, are uh, applied in uh, engineering or uh, scientific applications, uh, one of the key things uh, why uh, plastics are everywhere uh, are dependent on these usage as large scale applications. And here uh, one of the key terms which is used and uh, uh, which we are familiar with is the term plastic. And uh, plastic implies uh, the ability of the material uh, to retain permanent deformation uh, when uh, subjected to loads as opposed to elastic. So, when we look at mechanical properties of polymers, uh, we will look at uh, how uh, many of the polymers uh, show this deformation. Uh, a key term which is used is also thermoplastic, uh, in which case uh, uh, materials can melt and reform. So, this is one way of uh, classifying the materials where uh, it is based on plastic materials. Uh, the other large scale application materials are uh, cross linked polymers and uh, they belong to two large classes thermosets, where the degree of cross linking is very high and uh, elastomers and rubbers where degree of cross-linking is very low. And uh, based on degree of cross-linking, the way I mentioned high and low, I hope you can see uh, why rubbers are uh, flexible and uh, softer materials while thermosets, you can expect them to be harder and more rigid materials. Uh, many of the polymeric systems are used with a solvent. Uh, if it is uh, with water, then uh, you can have a gel or a hydrogel kind of a material. Uh, we can also have them in the form of solutions and dispersions and uh, emulsions. Uh, all of these uh, uh, have a specific uh, definition. Solution implies it is a molecular mixture between a polymer and a solvent, while dispersion and emulsion implies it is a two phase or even multi-phase mixture um, where both the uh, polymer and uh, the solvent phases retain their phase identities. And of course, uh, usage in composites. So, let us first look at uh, the uh, two broad terms uh, which are related to plastics and uh, rubbers. So, generally when we use in common terms, uh, both thermoplastics and thermosets just get referred to as a generic term plastics. Uh, but we, the thermoplastics are the one uh, which can melt upon heating. So, whenever we talk of recycling, it is only these thermoplastics when we are talking about. So, there is uh, another class of materials called thermosets, which actually set when you finish the polymerization. So, when we are fabricating thermosets, uh, we have to carry out reactions and then make the shape of the material. And once we uh, set the material, then we cannot melt it again. So, recycling of thermosets is a challenge because there is a formation of three dimensional network in case of the thermoset resin. So, this is also referred to as a resin when it is in the liquid form, before it has become set and become the final solid polymer. We also refer to it as a pre polymer. These imply uh, basically that the molar mass of macromolecules is small and only when uh, polymerization reactions happen, the molar mass builds up eventually leading to a three dimensional network. And to get this three dimensional network, we need a cross linker, which is also referred to as a curing agent. We essentially say that, uh, you know, we take the pre polymer or resin and then we cure it so that it becomes solid. So, therefore, the 
crosslinker is called a curing agent and naturally it's also a hardener because it takes the material from a liquid uh, pre-polymer, resin pre-polymer to a solid thermoset. And prominent examples of uh, these thermosets are uh, epoxy. Uh, you can look up uh, the applications of epoxy. It's a, it's a fantastic adhesive. Uh, for, for bonding uh, dissimilar materials, uh, there is uh, uh, not many, uh, there are not many adhesives which are as good as epoxy. One of the things you always can uh, prod yourself in terms of uh, thinking is when I say that epoxy is good adhesive, the question is why? Why is it a good adhesive? So the, the answer to that may lie in looking at the molecular structure and what are the interactions that epoxy can have with the surfaces with which it's going to bind. For example, epoxy is an adhesive for uh, cellulosic uh, uh, cardboard, those kind of substances. It can bond metals also. So, uh, and it can bond metals to FRP, uh, metals to polymer composites. That's why it's used in automotive applications also quite a lot these days. So you, you can go and look at the structure of epoxy and then try to th think in terms of what are the interactions which make it a good adhesive material. Uh, polyester is a very commonly used material with FRP, thermoset polyester, fiber reinforced plastic. Generally glass fiber is used in variety of applications such as in sporting goods or in uh, boat making and things, uh, 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 skis and uh, uh, bats and stumps, variety of materials when they are made, uh, quite often it may be a thermoset uh, polyester with uh, a, glass, a glass fiber as reinforcement. And urea formaldehyde is also a prominent example. Now, uh, just to highlight uh, the fact uh, that, uh, uh, you know, the, the curing and the hardening is done with uh, a substance, uh, the crosslinker, we, we can think of which crosslinker is good for which material. So this is, for example, an exam question where uh, we are asked to guess and uh, know uh, which rubber or which elastomer is cured with which curing agent. And uh, so, of course, uh, most of you may be quickly able to spot uh, that natural rubber is uh, uh, cured with sulfur and so Q3. So, actually, you can see that now uh, these are the two uh, options from which you have to think. Uh, so, in terms of uh, looking at this, uh, uh, what you can uh, try to figure out is uh, look at what are the bonds in acrylate. What is the functional group in acrylate? When we say that uh, silicon rubber is getting polymerized, is there a functional group or is, does it happen through an activated mechanism? If it does happen through activated mechanism, then you need an activator, a generator, which is either a free radical or any other activated species. So, so thinking like that, you can then try to do uh, uh, and uh, know what uh, curing agent is used for what rubber. So just think about this and uh, at the end of the lecture, we will come back and uh, look at the answer. Uh, in terms of uh, cross-linking, the difference between thermoset and uh, rubber, as I mentioned, is uh, degree of cross-linking and uh, elastomers are materials which are lightly cross-linked. And uh, the uh, material before cross-linking is also referred to as latex. So latex is collected from a rubber tree and then it is vulcanized, cross-linked to get the final rubber part. And there are several examples. Uh, natural rubber is of course obtained from trees, but we have several formulations of uh, uh, synthetic rubbers and uh, they are predominant in applications uh, which include from tire to vibration isolation to variety of sealant applications. And so we refer to it uh, as both rubber and uh, elastomer. Elastomer implying that you can stretch it uh, to a very significant degree. Uh, as far as uh, polymers for uh, electronics or uh, electrochemical cells or batteries is concerned, we use polymers which have a certain electrical property. So classification of polymers in those uh, kind of applications uh, are uh, based on different terms. Naturally, many of these applications are of more recent origin, while uh, the applications of thermoplastics and thermosets have been around with us for a significant amount of time. So generally we uh, used in, in electronics, we use polymers which are conducting and uh, they are also called intrinsically conducting polymers. And so we, uh, in a lecture later on, we are going to look at much more closely as to how 
electronic conductivity can come in polymer. Uh, just to uh, make you think about uh, how can conductivity come in a polymer, uh, the aspect of conjugation you can think of. You can try to anticipate why, how does a polymer become conducting. So, for example, uh, if you look at uh, uh, a polymer called polyacetylene, what you will see is it is a polymer which has alternate uh, single and double bond. And uh, you might also recall that uh, benzene the single and double bond instead of drawing like this we know that the electrons are delocalized and therefore we indicate that delocalization figuratively by drawing indicating delocalization. So, same delocalization can happen along this chain because of alternating double and single bond. So, this is the origin and the conjugation is important in making a polymer conducting polymer. Uh, you can also think uh, the important uh, polymer uh, which is uh, used as uh, conducting polymer is thiophene, thio implying sulfur and it has a structure of this kind. Now, you can draw a chain of polythiophene and again think in terms of how conjugation is there and therefore, how delocalization of electrons can take place and how a polymer chain can become conducting. The other sets of polymers which are used uh, in uh, applications uh, of uh, electrochemical cells uh, are in fuel cells which are uh, sulfonated polymers such as nafion and uh, we will uh, take a closer look at nafion in a future lecture. Uh, polyelectrolytes are uh, used in variety of applications also. They are macromolecules with ions. The, uh, there is other class of materials where polymer and charge complexes are there. So, in this case, macromolecule itself does not contain the ion, but polymer and charges are mixed together. That is why they are called complexes. And uh, finally, an important application for soft robotics where we can use materials which are elastomeric, but at the same time they can respond to electric fields. So, dielectric elastomers are important class of materials. In fact, commercially available acrylics and uh, 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 materials uh, which are silicones can give you very good uh, uh, performance in terms of electromechanical response. When we say electromechanical, it implies that subjecting material to electric field will give us mechanical response or subjecting material to a load can give us electrical response. So, dielectric elastomers are important examples of electromechanical, uh, electromechanically active materials. And so, we will spend uh, time on uh, polyelectrolytes uh, in uh, just couple of lectures down. And uh, of course, some of this classification we also looked at. And so, continuing further, uh, let us look at now the solutions uh, and uh, flowing uh, applications of polymers. When we say thermoplastics, thermosets and rubbers, we are implying solid polymer use, but polymers are used in their different liquid like forms also. So, solutions of course, uh, an example we looked at again in the fourth lecture was uh, xanthan gum solution which is used in petroleum and uh, uh, recovery and also food applications. Uh, an important application of polymer is in the dispersion form, where polymers are retained as particles and then there are, uh, there is a solvent or a dispersing medium. And this is also referred to as latex, because the latex that we get from uh, rubber tree is also a dispersion of uh, isoprene pre-polymer in a aqueous medium. And uh, an important uh, class of materials uh, which are uh, soft, they are solid like, but at the same time they contain large amount of solvents. So, we have a cross link polymer just like rubber, but uh, rubber is a dry material in the sense that it does not contain solvent. But if a cross link polymer network is swollen with large amount of solvent, then we call it a gel material because it is soft solid like at the same time we can it appears like a jelly 
the way we see it in uh, our food applications. And so hydrogels are cross-linked polymers that can have large amount of water. And in this case, uh, one important characteristic that is usually used is uh, to distinguish between the material which starting out where it's sol and then material finally when cross-linking is done called gel. So there is a sol to gel transition which is very important in these gel-like materials. And uh, the final application may be in the gel form, but while we are manipulating the material, it may be in the sol form. So all the manipulation has to get done before the gelation reaction happens. So sol-gel transition is an important uh, transition in these kind of materials. If you, an interesting question that you can think of that it's a dispersion, but it's a mixture of hydrogel particles. So if you have, let's say, uh, the three-dimensional uh, network of hydrogel in which each and every hydrogel particle has lots of uh, solvent and now this hydrogel particle is dispersed in water. So each and every uh, particle has uh, retained its identity in terms of uh, the cross-link network and uh, there is uh, water uh, in this medium also and of course all of this is like a dispersion in a medium. So in this uh, kind of a uh, complicated material system where hydrogel particles are dispersed in a uh, water medium, what we can do is uh, these particles can encapsulate a drug and uh, the overall uh, dispersion can be used as a drug. So therefore, uh, in addition to whatever we have discussed, there are very interesting possibilities of combination of macromolecules in various forms for different types of applications. So you can read about these microgels. It's a very fascinating new area of work. Now we'll close this lecture by looking at uh, the terms associated with polymer usage in composites. So these are called polymer composites or polymeric composites and a polymer is referred to as resin or matrix. It's also sometimes called neat. So it, neat resin or neat matrix implies that when the reinforcement or filler has not been added, while composite is when polymer is mixed with fiber or filler. And notice that I'm using the word reinforcement as well as a filler. And there's a small distinction between them. Reinforcement, when we say we want a property to be enhanced, while filler more often than not can be to just reduce costs. So that uh, filler is low cost compared to the polymer which is being added. So generally, uh, these both of these terms are used. Uh, and sometimes uh, we need to be careful uh, when somebody is saying filler, uh, they may actually imply that it's also for enhancement of properties. And so both fillers and reinforcements uh, can be from very small particle to larger particles. And in fact, reinforcement will be best when it's a continuous fiber. It's a very long fiber. And uh, in fact, in case of aerospace, uh, when an aircraft wing is made, the wing which is uh, meters of length, continuous fiber can be running through the whole wing itself. And that's when the maximum mechanical property advantage that we can get is obtained. And uh, another term which is used to describe uh, uh, these materials is also fiber reinforced plastic. Again, implying that plastics, which could be thermosets or thermoplastics, and in that continuous fiber or other fibers are incorporated to reinforce them and improve their mechanical properties. Now, just uh, thinking back about the question related to the curing of elastomers, uh, for silicone, uh, we use an activated uh, peroxide material. Uh, zinc oxide is used for chloroprin. And so, therefore, uh, you can now go back and try to justify as to why an amine material can be used for acrylics. And then you will have the complete answer for that question. Thank you.